My name is Rick Renner, and today I'm in the Resurrection of Christ Church in St. Petersburg, which is otherwise known as the Church on Spilt Blood. This church was built on this particular spot because this is where Tsar Alexander II was mortally wounded en route to the Winter Palace. And his son, Alexander III, gave the order for this church to be constructed on the site where his father had been fatally wounded. Finally, the church was finished and consecrated in 1907. Wow, such a spectacular sight. The walls of this church are covered with more than 71,000 square feet of beautiful mosaics, which were created in a workshop here in St. Petersburg. But then the communist regime came to power and in 1930, this church was officially closed. The bells were melted down and used for other things. And this was turned into a warehouse for potatoes and other vegetables. And actually there were plans to completely demolish this church, but the plans were interrupted by events in World War II and instead the church was turned into a morgue. Then after the war for years, it was used as a warehouse to hold theatrical props from a local theater. But finally, in 1997, it was reopened as a museum, and today, it's a working church. But when you come into this place, it is so amazing to see the depictions of Jesus' ministry on the walls. Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. It is simply remarkable. Or Jesus healing the woman with the issue of blood. Jesus healing blind Bartimaeus. Jesus casting a demon out of a man. Jesus multiplying the loaves and the fishes. And one of my favorite mosaics is of the day of Pentecost. And there you see Mary seated with all the other apostles as the Holy Spirit descends into the upper room and they are baptized in the Holy Spirit. All of that is depicted on the walls of this amazing church. And I really like the mosaic of Pentecost because it depicts the coming of the Holy Spirit and His power. We need the power of the Holy Spirit and we need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. God's intention is that the church be embellished with spiritual gifts, just like this church is embellished with treasures and murals. God has richly loaded the church with spiritual gifts. We need to know how to embrace them and cooperate with them. And then the miraculous stories of Jesus will not just be something we read on a page or see on the wall of the church, they will become living reality right in front of us because the gifts of the Holy Spirit bring the supernaturalness of Jesus to us. And that is what I'm going to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner and I've been waiting for you. And today I'm going to continue talking to you about why we need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. My friends, God gave the gifts of the Holy Spirit to you and to the church because God knew we needed the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But unfortunately today, when you visit even charismatic churches, it is very rare to see the gifts of the Holy Spirit in manifestation. Somebody might say, where are the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Well, the Holy Spirit's there. He's wanting to manifest His gifts, but you have to make room for the Holy Spirit to move. And very often, we're always thinking about how to make more room for people. We move them in, we move them out, but we forget to make room for the Holy Spirit. And if the Holy Spirit's going to move in our midst, then we have to make room for Him to move. And if we'll accommodate Him, He'll come with power, He'll come with glory, He'll come with gifts. And my friends, the gifts of the Holy Spirit impart something to us that nothing else imparts to us. It brings to us the living testimony of Jesus. We need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. 
And that's why I want you to have my brand new series called Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's 10 parts. It comes in multiple formats. It will just mm, make you want to set your heart to experience more of the power of God. And it comes with the study guide. And the study guide is loaded with all the points and the principles. Everything in the programs are also in the study guide. And when you read it while you see it or hear it, it really gets the teaching down deep inside you. And we're also offering you right now my book by the same title, Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. It is a short read, but the back of the book says, are you hungry to know and experience more of the supernatural workings of the Holy Spirit in your life? God has yet unknown dimensions of his power and gifts that he is designed to operate in the midst of his people. And you're about to discover why it's so important that those supernatural gifts become an ongoing living reality in you. This book is powerful. And you can also have this by going online or by giving us a call. And while you're online at our ministry online store, please look at all the other teachings we have available for you about the wonderful ministry of the Holy Spirit. My life changed when I was filled with the Holy Spirit and I was introduced to the power of God. And my friends, I want you to experience that same transformational power in your life. Amen. And I want to remind you that if you need prayer, we are here for you and we would love to pray with you for any need that you're facing in your life. Just give us a call or send us an email. And the moment the phone rings or your email shows up in our inbox, we're going to begin to really put our faith out there with you for God to do something amazing in your life. He says in Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I'll show you great and mighty things. We will call out to God with you in faith and God will do great and mighty things in your life. I believe that. But hey, reach for your Bible. And today we're going to go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, where we're looking at why we need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we're looking at the grace of God, which was poured out miraculously in the church of Corinth. And as a result of that grace, they teemed with spiritual gifts. And my friends, the church of Corinth had a lot of hangups, yet God moved mightily among them. And God is not a respecter of persons. If he'll do it among the Corinthians, he'll do it for you as well. You just have to make room for the Holy Spirit to come with all of his power and all of his gifts. But when you come to 1 Corinthians 1 verse 4, Paul writes and he says, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God, which is given you by Jesus Christ. And again, that word grace is the Greek word charis, which describes a divine touch that enables, it empowers, and it brings superhuman abilities that you previously did not have. When the grace of God touches a person, that person is transformed. In fact, the word grace used in secular writings during the time of the New Testament was even used to describe individuals who people believed was under some kind of a magic spell. When grace came upon them, they were so transformed that people would have said, wow, that person's under some kind of a spell because that grace changed them. They could do what they previously could not do. They became what they previously could never have become. It gave them abilities that they did not possess. That grace touched them and changed them and people would literally say that person's under a magic spell. Well, that word now is used by the Apostle Paul to describe what happens to you and me when the grace of God touches us. The grace of God changes us. And we saw in the last program that the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, that by the grace of God, I am what I am. Paul says, when the grace of God touched me, that word charis, that divine touch that changes us, I became who I am. This is not who I used to be, but the grace of God enabled me. The grace of God changed me. The grace of God gave me abilities that I previously did not have. And what I want you to understand is when the grace of God begins to work in your life or in your church, it's never invisible. It is never silent. The very nature of the Greek word charis, translated grace describes something that comes with an outward visible manifestation. You can see the grace of God in manifestation. And when the grace of God was poured out among the Corinthians, 
it manifested as spiritual gifts. When we continue in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 5, Paul goes on to say that in everything you are enriched by him. We covered this yesterday, but I want to cover it again very quickly today. The word enriched in Greek is a translation of the wonderful word platizo. The word platizo describes wealth so great it cannot be tabulated. It depicts abundant wealth vast wealth, extreme riches, incredible abundance, magnificent opulence, extravagant lavishness. This word platizo was used by Plato to say no one was richer than the legendary King Midas. And in fact, the word platizo here translated in rich is where we get the word for a plutocrat. A plutocrat refers to a person who is so rich that he is unable to ascertain the full extent of his wealth. This person's investment, the percentage that he's earning on all of his investments and on his portfolio, it is growing so rapidly that his accountants and his bookkeepers find it impossible to keep track of how much wealth he actually possesses. That is the word platizo, somebody that is filthy, stinking rich. They are so rich, they cannot even ascertain the full extent of their wealth. And that is the word that Paul uses to describe the spiritual riches which were among the Corinthians. The grace of God touched them, and that grace of God enriched them. They became spiritual plutocrats, filthy, stinking rich in a spiritual sense. And he goes on to say, in everything you are enriched by him. That word by in Greek is the word in, and it can be translated two ways. It can be translated that you are enriched in him, or it can be translated you are enriched by him. Both of these are possibly correct translations, and it tells us two very important things. Number one, the day that you were placed in Christ Jesus is the day you struck it rich. That is the richest day in your life. We're told in Romans chapter 8, verse 17, on that day you became an heir, an heir of God, and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Those words, joint heirs, describes a co-inheritor, a co-heir, which means the day you got saved, you literally became a joint heir with Jesus Christ with a legal right to all the promises of God. And because the word in can be translated that you were enriched in him, it means that it carries this idea. You were made rich the day you were placed in him. But... It can also be translated as the word by, which emphasizes that this enrichment process was not just a one-shot deal, but it continues throughout your life as long as you abide in the Lord. It really means you are enriched as a result of remaining in Him. And when you put it all together, the verse carries this idea. You are invested with great spiritual riches because you are in Him, but that's not all. The longer you remain in him, you just keep getting blessed with more and more spiritual wealth that comes to you as a result of being in him. That is amazing. But Paul here is talking about spiritual riches, and particularly he's talking about spiritual gifts. We know that because he continues in verse 5 to say that in everything you are enriched by him. Now we understand the Greek means you're enriched because you're in him. You continue to become more enriched because you remain in him. And then he mentions how they are rich in all utterance and in all knowledge. And here the Apostle Paul is describing particularly the gifts of utterance and the gifts of knowledge that were abundant in the church of Corinth. Utterance would be vocal gifts. What do I mean by vocal gifts? Vocal gifts or utterance gifts would be tongues, interpretation of tongues and prophecy. These are spiritual gifts that when vocalized, you see these are utterance gifts, when they are vocalized, they supernaturally convey a message from the heart of God to a specific person or even to an entire congregation. But Paul said they also had knowledge gifts, 
You could also call these revelatory gifts because they reveal knowledge or they reveal something supernatural. This includes word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. These are spiritual gifts that supernaturally reveal either the heart of God or the heart of others or facts or details that naturally could not be known. And according to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 5, the church of Corinth was enriched with gifts of utterance or vocal gifts, gifts of knowledge or revelatory gifts. They were teeming with these kinds of spiritual gifts. In fact, they had so many of these gifts in manifestation that the Apostle Paul had to write 1 Corinthians chapter 14 to tell them how to manage the manifestation of these gifts. And then when you read 1 Corinthians Chapter 1, verse 6, Paul continues to say, Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. What does he mean, the testimony of Christ? Well, let me give it to you like this. I grew up in a church where we believed the Bible. We really believed the Bible. I thank God for the church that I grew up in. But I didn't see a lot of supernatural activity in my church. For example, I would read in the Gospels that Jesus was a healer. But I had really never seen anybody be healed. So to me, to a certain degree, Jesus being a healer was like a fairy tale that you read in the Gospels. I had never seen that. But yet, the testimony of Christ is that he is a healer. The testimony of a Christ is also that he is a prophet. The testimony of Jesus is also that he is a miracle worker. He is all of those things. But all of those things to me were simply in the mental realm. And those things remain in the mental realm until the gifts of the Holy Spirit begin to work in your midst and confirms who Jesus is to you. For example, when you finally see a healing right in front of your eyes, what you believed leaves the mental realm and it enters the real realm. That testimony of Jesus is confirmed right in front of you. You may intellectually believe that Jesus is a miracle worker and that's good, but it remains in the mental realm until you see the working of miracles. And when you see the working of miracles, it brings to you and confirms to you the testimony of who Jesus is. You may mentally believe that Jesus is a prophet. But if you've never seen the gift of prophecy in operation, there's a whole realm about Jesus' prophetic ministry that you will never understand. But when the gift of prophecy is in operation and you see that gift right in front of you, it confirms the testimony that Jesus is a prophet. And in fact, the word confirmed that is used in these verses is the Greek word bio, which means to authenticate, to guarantee, to establish to make firm, sure, or steadfast. It depicts something that is proven to be true. It was even a legal term used to validate that a document was trustworthy and established as authentic. And when the gifts of the Holy Spirit are in operation, it brings to us the testimony of Jesus what we mentally believe leaves the mental realm. It enters the real realm and we see Jesus the healer in front of us. We experience Jesus the miracle worker in front of us. We see and experience Jesus the prophet as the gift of prophecy operates in front of us. Everything we believe about Christ, the testimony of Christ that is in our heads intellectually suddenly becomes confirmed in front of us because of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which bring us this supernatural confirmation of who Jesus is. And my friends, the verse goes on to say that the gifts of the Holy Spirit will confirm us unto the end. The word end is the Greek word telos, which could describe a conclusion, which means the gifts of the Holy Spirit are to be in operation until the conclusion of the church age. But there's something else important. That word in the Greek word telos is also the very Greek word which depicts maturity or perfection, which means the gifts of the Holy Spirit are to bring us into a new place of spiritual maturity. So rather than believing that the gifts of the Holy Spirit make people carnal or silly, as I had been taught when I was growing up, the Apostle Paul explicitly teaches in 1 Corinthians 
chapter 1, verse 8, that the gifts of the Holy Spirit bring us into a place of maturity and spiritual completion. They mature us. They bring us a new understanding of Jesus. Everything we intellectually believe suddenly because of the gifts of the Holy Spirit in operation leaves the mental realm, enters the real realm. We see Jesus, the healer. We see Jesus, the miracle worker. We experience Jesus, the prophet. It confirms who Jesus is to us. The gifts of the Holy Spirit authenticate everything we mentally believe so that we see it and we experience it. In fact, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9 says, God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. That word fellowship being the Greek word koinonia, which describes fellowship, companionship, or partnership, but it was the very word used in the Greek language to depict a true, legitimate business partner, which means when the gifts of the Holy Spirit are in operation in your life or in your church, it causes you to partner with Jesus in a new way. Jesus literally becomes your partner in bringing his power, bringing his glory. You enter into fellowship with Jesus or you enter into a partnership with Jesus when the gifts of the Holy Spirit are in manifestation. So today we have seen that when the gifts of the Spirit are in manifestation, it causes everything we mentally believe to leave the mental realm and enter the real realm. We don't just mentally believe it anymore. We see it. We experience it. It authenticates to us who Jesus is. It brings us into maturity and the gifts of the Holy Spirit bring us into a high level partnership with Jesus. We need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I'll be back in just a moment and I want to pray for you. Do you see the gifts of the Holy Spirit manifested in your church services? If not, where are they? Where did they go? If God wants the gifts of the Holy Spirit to operate in your church and in your life, how can you see them activated and realized in front of your own eyes? These are the important questions that Rick Renner answers in his 10-part series, Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. In addition, Rick answers exactly what are the gifts of the Spirit? Are they really supposed to be active in every Christian's life? Is it possible to have too many spiritual gifts? What to do if the gifts have become dormant in your life or in your church? And why we need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. This essential series is available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $20. We also want you to get Rick's accompanying companion book, Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. This powerful, easy to read 100 page book is only $10 and is loaded with easy to understand answers about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. By the time you're finished reading it, you'll understand that God wants the gifts of the Holy Spirit to operate in you and in every church. Wow, you'll be so thankful that you read this powerful book. Don't miss this special offer, the 10 part series, Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit and the companion book, Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. When Denise and I began our ministry many decades ago, the Holy Spirit gave us Romans 10, 18, which says, Yea, verily, their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. And in all of these decades, we've been doing our best to obey this mandate from heaven. And today, miraculously, we are reaching people clear to the very end of the earth. We're reaching people in the Russian-speaking world and millions of them. We're reaching people in the English-speaking speaking world and large numbers of people are now reaching out to us for prayer, support and resources. As a result of all of this growth, we need a new ministry home in Tulsa and we need to construct a new TV studio in Moscow where we can prepare teaching that will change people's lives. In Tulsa, we have no more room to grow, yet we're growing exponentially all day every day our pastoral partner care department is ministering to people from around the planet who are reaching out to us for prayer and support oh how i wish you could be there to hear the calls and see how people's lives are literally being changed and in moscow we are bursting at the seams as russian speakers from around the world are reaching out to us for prayer and for support 
We're producing up to seven daily TV programs, and we desperately need a larger studio to produce Bible teaching that people can trust that will change their lives. In both locations, in Tulsa and in Moscow combined, we need 50,000 square feet of new space so we can minister to the precious people God is bringing to us. And with the land, architectural plans, all furnishings, TV equipment, everything we need, the entire ministry expansion project comes to $120 a square foot. And friend, it's not about buildings. It's about having the space we need so we can effectively minister to the needs of people. We're told in Matthew 28, verse 19, go into all the world and teach all nations. That's what we're doing, but we need your help so we can do it more effectively. We need a new ministry home in Tulsa, and we need a new studio in Moscow where we can prepare teaching that people can trust. And I'm asking you today to ask the Holy Spirit if He wants you to be a part of the giving team to help us accomplish this expansion project. Ask Him today, Holy Spirit, would you want me to be a part of this and do whatever He tells you to do as together we fulfill the great commission of Jesus in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. It has been such an honor to be with you today and talk to you about why we need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And my friend, I want you to order the brand new series called Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. These teachings are just jam-packed with information. You need to hear it and hear it and hear it and really get the teaching down deep inside you. It's 10 parts. It comes in multiple formats and it comes with a study guide. And we're also offering you right now my book by the same title called Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. I want you to have this book. I know this is transformational material that will carry you into the power of God like you've never experienced it before. So please order yours today by giving us a call or going online. And please remember that if you're not a partner, we want you to become a partner with our ministry. When you become a partner, you help us take the teaching of the Bible across the earth to people who are crying out and they're saying, God, please send someone to me with teaching that I can trust. Proverbs 10, 21 says, the lips of the righteous feed many. That's our assignment. But when you become a partner, you help us take this teaching to the people that are crying out for it. And the moment you become a partner, we're going to welcome you to our partner family. And we're going to send you Denise's book called The Gift of Forgiveness and my book called Life in the Combat Zone. We always send these to new partners as our way of saying welcome to the partner family. And be sure to let us know how to pray for you. And Father, we thank you for the word that we've heard today. Lord, we pray for the gifts of the Holy Spirit to work in us and through us to bring us the living reality of Jesus. Lord, we don't want our knowledge of Jesus just to remain in the mental realm. We want it to enter the real realm where the testimony of Jesus is confirmed right in front of us. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow. But remember, Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Thank you for joining Rick Renner today. For more information about Rick Renner Ministries and product resources, visit renner.org and connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.